Welcome back, curious people. In our upcoming question, we'll see that we have to deal with a couple technicalities of definitions, so let's get started. The statement reads, calculate the energy W using both methods derived in the text for a sphere of radius R with a frozen in uniform polarization P. Comment on the discrepancy, which, if either, is the true energy of the system. What we should know for this is the energy formulas derived in the text, uh, W equals epsilon naught over 2 times the volume integral of E squared, and W equals 1 half of the volume integral of D dot E. All right, so for our solution, uh, let's recall that we found earlier in the chapter what the electric field inside the sphere, what inside the sphere is, and we know what the external field is from chapter 3. So in terms of the polarization P, for anything inside the sphere, we have negative P over 3 epsilon naught in the z-hat direction. Outside, however, we have the electric field of the dipole, which has a radial direction and a theta direction. So the work total is the work inside plus the work outside. So for the electrostatic work inside, we have the volume integral from uh, 0 to R, um, and then we'll go from R to infinity for outside. So we square the field term that we have in the curly brackets and multiply by d tau, which is our typical spherical integration factors. We had a lot of cancellations. We see that our angular integrals go to 2 pi times 2. The radial integral cancels out nicely, and we're left with r cubed over 3. And so we just get a bunch of cancellations till we finalize with this. Um, now, for outside, it's a little more work. Uh, recall that with the r hat and theta hat dot products, we're left with squared terms with cosine and sine. So we set up the same thing, but again, for our r integral, we have uh, 2 big R to infinity as our limits, not from 0 to big R. <laughs> and then, uh, again, more cancellations, so be very careful. Uh, for dealing with the trig functions, we just use the Pythagorean identity, so sine squared equals uh, 1 minus cosine squared. That's how we got 3 cosine squared there. And then we just integrate through. Uh, nothing too tricky, a lot of moving parts and cancellations. However, uh, we should note that when we add the two uh, work integrals together, or energy integrals together, we're left with a positive result of some magnitude. We don't have P or R, so we can't necessarily calculate it, but it's positive and definite. Uh, that will be uh, a discussion point here soon. This is the correct electrostatic energy of the configuration, but it is not the total work necessary to assemble the system because it leaves out the mechanical energy involved in polarizing the molecules themselves. For the other method, consider that the electric displacement D uh, is equal to epsilon naught E plus the polarization P, which we know what that is uh, from the other slide. Uh, P equal um, negative 3 epsilon naught E, so we can just add them together to find uh, D in terms of E inside the sphere, and outside it's just epsilon naught E. So when we take the dot products, we split them into their respective regions, and uh, we note that since D is equal to epsilon naught E, uh, the outside integral is equal to the outside integral of the first method, uh, but the inside we need a little more work. So one half of d dot e is equal to uh, negative two times epsilon naught over two e squared. Note that that negative two will come into play soon. Uh, we see that the epsilon naught over two e squared is the same as the inside integral from before, and uh, so we can substitute that into the parentheses, which is why we factor the negative two out. And we see that we're left with a negative 4 pi p squared r squared over 27 epsilon naught. So then this shows us that the work total or energy total is equal to the energy out minus 2 energy in. Which is odd because then we're just left with 0. Work out minus work in leaves us with 0. That's definitely a strange situation.
This, however, is not surprising once we consider that the derivation calculates the work done on a free charge, and in the problem there is no free charge in the site. Since this is a nonlinear dielectric, however, the result cannot be interpreted as the, quote, work necessary to assemble a configuration, end quote. The latter would depend entirely on how you assemble it.